tea bags. You only find out how strong they are when you put them in hot water. So I want to talk today about effective leadership in further education and skills because it's very clear from all of our inspection findings that leadership is pivotal to the quality of provision. Last year, Sir Michael Wilshaw highlighted in his second <coughs> annual report 12 providers who were judged to be outstanding at their previous inspection. It's encouraging because these providers show that it is possible to be outstanding in any type of provider with any number of learners. Is it right that we sit back and see an outstanding institution plummet from outstanding to inadequate? But I don't need you to sit round here nodding at these tables, agreeing. I need you to pick up your pen and I need you to respond to the consultation. There was an advert that was uh, seeking an unqualified maths teacher. I've never seen an advert for an unqualified nurse or an unqualified doctor. And it links back to the earlier phrase from Tony Benn about hope, that sense of hope. If we have the space and time, we can drive the really excellent quality, that outward looking and close focus on the needs of our learners. I want to begin by looking at a few quotes from a colleague of mine in France, a guy called Christophe de Jour. And he found that by talking to people at the front line, there were a whole number of issues where they had been encouraged to cut corners, do things that threw them out of kilter with their professional values. And that when he went and fed this back to managers, he was confronted by denial and what he calls institutional lying. What that takes us to is a situation where we are facing, I think, uh, the threat of a loss of moral compass in the face of an economistic culture, how can we say no to the policies which privilege value over values? We were surprised to find there was no statistically significant correlation whatsoever between goal clarity and goal commitment and anything. But there was a strong correlation between sense of purpose and both quality of the relationship and outcomes. Do we really, when we set goals for people we're in learning, do we want to set them a boundary or limit? Or is what we're about actually taking away the boundaries or limits? And the slopes of Everest are littered with the bodies of people who had smart goals. The kids who come to you, the 17 and 18 year olds who come to you, desperate for a qualification, are damaged. They are in trouble. There's no reason for their lack of confidence. It's just they've been damaged by the system and you at college are the last chance saloon. What matters is they gain confidence that they can learn what you put in front of them, cope with it, understand it, even enlarge upon it themselves. Once they've got that feeling, I can do that, they know then they can do it with any other subject they choose. So now it's your time. We've got 45 minutes to um, have a discussion with the panel. Please be as provocative as possible. Is there a funding crisis in further education? Well, as a sixth form college, I would say absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, I don't think there's ever a time when there isn't a funding crisis, probably. And I think what we need to do is, is remind ourselves what our moral compass is, and we also had the input about goals. You know, we've got to think about what we're going to do, and we're going to have to do some things quite differently, but it's going to be extraordinarily difficult, particularly from September 2015 on. There is no there's no doubt about that. My question is really, you know, why after 21 years can we not get to a sensible funding model that is actually transparent, is fair, and actually allows us to do what we need to do to achieve that moral compass point, if you like? We make a lot of assumptions about whether we can measure performance, and most of them turn out to be unfounded. And I don't believe standards have fallen at all. Um, the results show quite clearly that they haven't. But I'm going, to, I'm going to add to that that what I do see is a lot of teachers stressed, a lot of teachers overworking, a lot of teachers making a commitment to teaching that is over and above the actual teaching hours. But the difference between real talent and fake talent is that the people who are real talent are ambitious for a cause. And the people who are the fake talent are, by and large, ambitious for themselves. And as a result, and I've certainly witnessed um, a, a lot of people climbing the ladder but just staying long enough to drop the grenade and leaving other people to sort out the fallout. 
the terrible thing of putting a control freak in control is they become more freaky. <laughs> Can you please thank the panel? I think they've been absolutely tremendous.